Well, welcome everybody. We've got a um, interesting question today. I get lots of emails, but this one wants to know about how do we use EFT effectively with a toddler? You know, a two-year-old, a one-year-old, a five-year-old. You know, this, uh, someone who's too young, not not an adult, where you can have an adult conversation and help and help get beyond some issue. Well, the child might be you know, upset because they were teased, uh, you know, at school about something. Uh, that's a good time to use EFT, whether you're tapping or bringing the unseen therapist in or whatever. In fact, I would re recommend doing that with a child every night, as a matter of fact, before they go to bed, sort of like reading them a bedtime story, because we all, especially in childhood, collect these things, these upsets and, and angers and, and guilts and all kinds of things that happen. And we collect them over time and, and really have no way to resolve them. So they just collect and build and then we become adults. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we have to deal with and sometimes wonder why, because it all seems just so routine, you know. So to do it with a child is important. The approach, however, is a little different simply because a child is not an adult and really can't have an adult conversation. But um, you need to approach it. You need to get rapport with the child first. And I assume if you're a parent, you have that, that rapport and so on. But, you know, they've got to do that. Now, if you're going to do some tapping with them, if that's the level that you're you're approaching the child with, you know, children like to be touched typically. And you can have them, for example, just say, well, what happened to the, you can say, what happened at school today, for example? Oh, you know, uh, I didn't do very well, at, uh, you know, at, re at recess in the sports and I got teased, you know, and Janie, Janie told me I just wasn't very coordinated and, you know, was, awkward and stuff like that. I feel bad. Okay. Well, as he's telling you that story, he's giving you a specific event. I mean, he's talking about his issue. And so you can just, as he's doing that very gently, you know, tap on the meridians, you know, the, the tapping points, if you're doing tapping and do that two or three times, having tell another story, just do a little tapping. It's kind of a nice loving thing to do. Okay. Better. I think, uh, than doing, you know, the physical tapping on the meridians, which is what EFT tapping is about. Um, rather to use our later advancement, that would be the unseen therapist. Now, that's a, that's a spiritual dimension, of course. And and a child, you know, isn't, uh, isn't ready to talk about something like called the unseen therapist. We use that name just because it's non-denominational, but they're not there yet. And so that'll kind of lose them a little bit. Unseen therapist, what's that? But they do relate very nicely to things like angels, fairies, good fairies, and this kind of thing. Um, so pick out something they really like, you know, in, in that area. And just have them close their eyes as they talk about what happened. And you could just say something like, and here comes the good fairy, and here comes your angels. Or have them just imagine angels appearing, you know, re rerun the event, have them tell the event that happened earlier in the day at school. And then just have them close their eyes and have them bring in an angel or what, fairy or whatever. And have them get used to the idea of bringing in such a fairy to wave their wand, flap their wings, fly around it, sing a song to it, love it, and so on. I think, I think getting a child used to communicating with their own internal sources, because these the unseen therapists, as well as angels, fairies, and the like, are um, they are internal and to get them used to doing that at an early age and begin to develop some confidence in that 
oh, big move, big move. And it doesn't have to interfere. In fact, it could even be done with, be done in connection with um, whatever religious persuasion may be going on in your particular particular family. This can also be done, I think it's important to recognize, this can also be done surrogately. Sometimes the child doesn't want to even talk about these things, too painful. They don't want to tattle on somebody. Uh, and they, you know, they just don't, don't want to do it for whatever the reason. You can do it surrogate. You can imagine yourself being the child. You could tap on your meridians if you, if you wish, but more powerful just to bring in the unseen therapist as though you were the child. And imagine what may have happened. You may, because the child may have given you a clue or two, oh, somebody teased me or, or um, you know, I fell and looked awkward or, or I didn't do well in a spelling test or the teacher said something or whatever, okay? Start imagining that, imagining as though you're the child, the guilt, the anger, the fear, whatever it is that, that might be showing up. Bring in unseen therapists um, and get your result in that, in that way. Now, doing this surrogately, has a pro and a con. The, the con, obviously, is you really can't get feedback from your patient, your client, the child in this case. You know, how are you feeling now kind of thing? And, you know, on a scale of zero to 10, what is it to begin with if a child's able to even do that? Oh, yeah. So you don't get that kind of feedback. That's that's the problem, okay? It's, it's a not a problem. It's a handicap. It doesn't mean you can't get things done, okay? It just means your ability to measure it immediately. Um, um, not so prolific, okay? <laughs> Maybe even zero, but but it shows up eventually in their in the child's personal piece. The uh, but the pro about it is you can do something even if the child doesn't isn't cooperative about it. And the child can be off, you know, watching something on television or sleeping or something like that. And you can still imagine all this going on. And because we are all one, and that if you're not aware of that, you know, reading my book, The Unseen Therapist, would bring that to light pretty clearly. Um, in fact, uh, uh, links to that are, you know, given in the essential links below, below this video. But because we're all one, well, what happens then is the, um, uh, you doing it on yourself has some effect on them. It gets rather, if you've never done this before, it gets rather astonishing. You may or may not see results to begin with at first that are obvious, but eventually you, you do this for someone else and eventually you'll find out, oh, their headache goes away. Ooh, okay. Uh, you can do that with a child. So a child could have a headache, a child could have a body pain of some kind. Um, and so it could have a leg in a cast and you want it to heal faster. You can do this either surrogately or directly with them. Okay. So a lot of good stuff in there. Anyway, that those are some good highlights. I hope that I hope that uh, gives you some enthusiasm for moving moving in that direction. So we'll see you next time.